Hi all, so this is a continuation of the last video and in this one I'm going to uh, walk through two examples of how to find the six trig functions given a particular point in a coordinate plane. Alright, so it says um, find the six trig functions at the terminal side of an angle passes through the point and for the first example 8 comma 5. So let's give ourselves a visual. I'm going to just draw a coordinate plane and it doesn't have to be exact. I know 8, 5 is going to be somewhere in the first quadrant, so I'm just going to put this point right here, and it's going to be 8, 5. Okay, so I am going to draw my terminal side of my angle. is always on my x-axis. I've got a vertex. I'm going to draw my, um, oh, I'm sorry, that's the initial side is always on the x-axis. My terminal side is going to go right through that point in the first quadrant um, and from that I am going to draw my triangle by taking this point and dropping a straight line down to my x-axis to form a right triangle. From the coordinates of the point I know that the x portion of my triangle is 8, the y portion, this vertical leg, is 5. So the only thing left to do really for the triangle is to find the hypotenuse, which is R. We represent it as R. So let's do the calculation to find R. R is going to equal the square root of, since we're starting at the origin, really we don't need to subtract 0 from the X and the Y parts. We can just go ahead and square 8 and square 5. Um, that gives us 60, 64 plus 25, which is 89. So our um, hypotenuse here is the square root of 89. And as I said before, the hypotenuse of your triangle will always have a positive value. Because we're in quadrant 1, uh, we will have a positive value for all of our x and y values as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the sine, cosine, and tangent first. The sine. The sine of our angle theta, and we're going to call this angle theta. We're going to draw in a positive direction and label theta right there. The sine of theta is going to be y over r. My y portion is 5. r is radical 89. And I can't leave it like that. No, we're not allowed to have radicals in the denominator, so I rationalize it by multiplying by radical 89 over radical 89. And my sine is going to be 5 radical 89 over 89. All right, so we're going to do that for the other five functions. And I'm not going to rationalize for the other five functions. I'm going to just do that straight in my head. So I've got cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. Um, and when I rationalize that, that's going to be 8 radical 89 over 89. Tangent is going to be, it's going to be opposite over adjacent or y over x. So that is 5 over 8. Now let's go ahead and take a look at all of those other three functions. I call them reciprocal functions because their values are reciprocals of the um, functions above them. So if we take a look at our cosecant of our angle, um, our cosecant we can get just from taking our sine, the initial value of our sine, and taking the reciprocal of it, radical 89 over 5. And you notice I didn't take the final value of sine, I took the initial value, because if I took the final value, I'd have to rationalize it um, again. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for secant. Secant of our angle is just going to be the reciprocal of our cosine. So that is going to be radical 89 over 8. And then cotangent, cotangent of theta is going to be the reciprocal of our tangent function over here, so that's going to be 8 over 5. All right, guys, if you need to pause this to take notes, go ahead and do that, because I'm going to erase part of what I did so that we can fit the second example in. All right, so let's go ahead and erase this. 
<clears throat> so we can fit in that second example. All right, so now we're going to take and draw coordinate axes and find negative 3, negative 4. And negative 3, negative 4 is going to be in the third quadrant. And we're going to say that is pretty much right here, negative 3, negative 4. We don't have to be exact. So again, when we draw our triangle, our initial side is always going to be for our angle on the x-axis. Our terminal side goes through this point. And remember, when we build our triangle, we take our dot here and we drop a line up to our x-axis. All right, so the x value here we know has a value of negative 3. Our y value, which is our vertical length of our triangle, has a value of negative 4. This is going to be our, the angle that we're actually going to look at now. Even though our whole angle is here, we're only going to look at this portion of our triangles to see what values we have for our trig values. So now let's go ahead and calculate our r value. We could go ahead and use the distance formula, but from geometry, we know that our r value, we have a 3, 4 blank triangle. Everybody should remember that. Our r value is 5. So if you don't need to calculate it, don't worry about it. If you know your special triangles, just go ahead and write that hypotenuse in. So the sine, let's take a look at the sine. The sine of theta for this one is going to be y over our r value, so it's a negative 4 over 5. Our cosine of theta is going to be our x over r, which is negative 3 over 5. Now we have our tangent of theta is going to be y over x, so we have a negative 4 over a negative 3, which gives us a positive 4 thirds. Um, and then our other values are just going to be the reciprocals. So we have our cosecant of theta is the reciprocal of sine. So it's going to be a negative 5 fourths. Our secant of theta is going to be a negative 5 thirds. And then our cotangent of theta is going to be 3 fourths. All right, so those are the only two examples I have for you. Um, I want you guys to go ahead and finish taking notes and then take the online Canvas quiz, and I will see you in class.